This is our daily podcast. And live in studio with me is Sipu Lester Holmes and Marcus Brimage, writer who's now evolved into a yoga teacher. Wow, nation, we're going to come back and talk about that. So today's topic is Ask Dr. Love. If love is the answer, what is your question? And our Ask Dr. Love podcast is designed to help you ask the right questions to get the right answer to improve your life. So since the quarantine is winding down, what are you going to do differently? And to that end, I brought two friends into the studio with me who are experts in their own field. Today's topic is Tai Chi Yoga and Chi Gong. So we're going to start with Sifu Lester Holmes, who I've known for a decade. And he started off as a bodybuilder, and then he became a fighter. And now he's a martial artist as a Tai Chi combat instructor. Wow. Lester, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, great introduction. Um, as he said earlier, my name is Sifu Lester Holmes, and I think we actually know each other a little longer than a decade. Wow. We're getting old, but getting young at the same time. <laughs> you look older. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, y'all. <laughs> really appreciate that. Yeah, that segues us right into talking about Tai Chi. A lot of people have heard of Tai Chi. They see it as that beautiful dance in the park where people are moving around haphazardly. Little do they know this Tai Chi is not only a beautiful dance, it can help us with the aging process. Being an ancient healer from China, um, what, thousands of years old, we call this Tai Chi 360. So we deal with the beautiful dance, we deal with the healing, we deal with the Qigong, which is Dr. Love's specialty. And we also have here with us Marcus Brimage, who brings in the full circle of Tai Chi, which is not only known for being a healing art, but also a martial art. He's a veteran MMA fighter, and he's came together full circle with the Tai Chi 360. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Marcus, uh, MMA fighter, now yoga instructor. Shout out to Yoga Home. Uh, that's where I got my yoga certification. And um, it was it's crazy because uh, I was doing Tai Chi for such a long time, but I totally was not into it or was not even thinking about it. But when I started doing my yoga teacher training, uh, the concepts I heard, I've already heard before in Tai Chi, you know, it's like, oh my God, this guy's been trying to teach me this for years. So now I'm playing catch up to, uh, to what I know from yoga. So yoga was a great, uh, was a great introduction to Tai Chi for me. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly an overlapping synergistic connection of these three disciplines. Uh -huh. Now, synergy means synchronistic energies. So synchronous <clears throat> means that they're synced. And so yoga is union of mind and body. And Tai Chi moves mind and body. And Qigong connects mind and body. So now, can you just give a brief, uh, of what are some of the healing benefits of Tai Chi? Well, Tai Chi is world-class, world-renowned, especially um, for our senior citizens. Mm. You know, and there's a lot of medical to, medical uh, material to support my claims. Um, number one being slip and fall. Slip and falls, yeah. So if a senior falls down, most of the time they have a hard time getting back up. When I say that, I'm talking physically getting their body back together. They break their hips. Hip replacement being one of the number one surgeries, surgeries in America. Exactly. Coming from slip and falls. So it is a healing art, no doubt, just from that perspective. 
uh, it, it helps regain. It takes us backwards to where we had that balance as a kid. Balance, right? right. So that's represented by, the, represented by the cream, which mm -hmm. is known for having um, beautiful balance, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So now, is there any martial application of yoga, or is that all healing? Um, from what I know, is uh, just the uh, healing. I am a very, I am a representation of it. Uh, I got into yoga after I ruptured my Achilles heel. Yeah. So every time that scene from Kill Bill, when she like slits the guy's Achilles heel, oh, I'm like, ah, I feel that every time. <laughs> like, ah. So, uh, and um, I could not train, I could not train again because uh, the doctors was afraid I was going to uh, rupture my heel again. So mm. after they reattached it. So um, after that, I couldn't do anything but uh, yoga and kung fu. And I was like, All right, let me just give it a try. So that's when I started putting in the same amount of hours I did, like boxing, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I did that with yoga and tai chi. Wow, that's a really cool overlap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it was really cool. cool. It was now, cool. it sounds like you're a really dedicated person. Your injury didn't knock you down and make you give up and go sit on the couch and eat uh, potato chips and uh, diet soda. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Straight up, I was like, I ain't going out like that. And, um, and figured it out. And um, after, uh, as a matter of fact, after that, that's uh, when I got like uh, a knockout head kick, like after the uh, Achilles heel rupture, afterwards. You knocked somebody else out or you got knocked out? No, I knocked someone else out. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, right. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you teach close quarter combat, combat Tai Chi, and you also teach like multiple opponents. Right. Okay. How does that work? Well, with Tai Chi, like anything else, like learning a, a new language, right? Mm -hmm. First, we learn um, the letters, the alphabet, mm -hmm. and then we start putting together words, mm -hmm. sentences. And so on and so on. And paragraphs, right? right? So here we are, same same mentality when it comes to learning Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. um, we start off very simple. At first, it's, you see that pretty dance. Mm -hmm. That will be considered our solo practice. Solo means personal. Mm -hmm. So that personal practice is your meditation because mm -hmm. it's also known as meditation in motion. So mm -hmm. now you're working on mental health. Mm -hmm. You said it was a health exercise. Right. Right. So you, you learn how to center yourself and, and, and bring back your, your mind from that everyday hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. We call it centering, right? We're still working on personal practice. After we've done that for a while, we started doing what Tai Chi is very known for is push hands, mm -hmm. which is the sensitivity. That's mm -hmm. why Tai Chi can be done by anyone, large or small, mm -hmm. because it teaches you how not to go force against force. Exactly. How to overcome the hardness with softness. Mm -hmm. Complete ideologies from what most people are used to. Mm -hmm. And that's what intrigued me. It's, you know, I say for like a softer type being who's not really looking for conflict. We're looking for balance. Okay. Right? So in comes the martial art. We learn how to use our, our maybe not so big body mm -hmm. to handle big situations no matter if it's a fight physically mental or whatever mm -hmm. or even it could be a big fight because you got an injury mm -hmm. how do you fight through it and keep going like marcus just said he wasn't willing to throw in the towel mm -hmm. okay All right so now how does how did yoga help you with jujitsu or how did jujitsu help you with yoga well um to refer back to your first question, when you uh, asked about any martial aspect in yoga, um, the yes is the opponent is yourself. So if you can discipline yourself, uh -huh. you can discipline, you can uh, easily have an easier time in uh -huh. pursuit of mastering the art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something outside <clears throat> of you, you know, as opposed to something within you, you know. It's like uh, there's a book called the, the Namas and the Niyamas, and they talk about like the restraints that you have to attain like these, you know, supposed spiritual powers or just uh, well-being. Like uh, 
not not stealing, not causing harm to people, you know, just having certain restrictions in yourself. Okay, so yamas are the things you're not supposed to do. Yes, the restrictions to yourself, if I'm correct. And then niyamas are the things that you're supposed to overcome. Yes. Okay. Ah, that's a great one to break it down, yes. And um, that so that's um, so yeah, that's the only like martial aspect that I can see to the uh, to the yoga, but uh, and I bring that type of discipline into the martial art as well. Now that's beautiful because in yoga you recognize that you are the opponent, mm -hmm. you are your own worst enemy, mm -hmm. and in qigong there is no opponent. <laughs> Whoa. There's no opponent. So you're just moving and there's no opponent. Mm. Okay. That's so good. that's a spiritual philosophy that says, I have nothing moving against me. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I can always be loose. I can always flow. Okay. So, so can I piggyback off of that? Yeah, please. So there's the Qigong Tai Chi synergy right there. Uh, because also we have a thing, no enemy, no conflict. Mm. So... That being said, no self. No self. Wow. <laughs> now we're getting real spiritually. Thick. Does that go back to being formless? Right. So now we're moving into a whole other realm now. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So I'm I'm gonna open the the lines for questions. So if you're live on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can uh, type in your question for either Lester or Marcus or myself. And if you're on your phone, you can text at AskDrLove to 81010. And then you'll get a reply box and then you can put your question in there. And I hope you're really enjoying this because this is exciting for me to have these two guys here with this uh, this overlap and this uh, connection of uh, disciplines. Okay. So we have a question? Yeah, I want to do it all. How do I start? Okay. I want it all. Okay, so let me give you a couple of options. Um, number one option is you can start with the marshal to protect your body. Or you could start with uh, yoga relax and calm the spine. Or you could start with uh, Qigong. So if you want to do it all, I'm going to invite you to contact us and we will put together a class. How's that? That's good. On a Monday. Okay. Let's save the date, uh, June 1st. All Let's right. save that date. Are you available June 1st? Monday, sunny time, June 1st? Yeah, I'm there. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so at 10 a.m., we're going to do a podcast with all three of us. How's that? that sounds and good. that's how you can do it all. That sounds good. Okay? Yeah. And you can get a little bit of each and then incorporate it. Nice. That sounds like a, a great question. Okay. So, um, so I studied... Uh, Wudong, and Wudong starts with uh, hard martial, and as it works its way up, it becomes soft. Right. And Shaolin starts soft, and as you go up, it becomes hard. <laughs> so even though Wudong and Shaolin are different styles, at the very end, they cover everything. Okay. Now, <laughs> so you have experience with Shaolin. I have actually experience with both. With both, so, okay. You know, to a to a small degree, but actually, I specialize in a system called Temple Style Tai Chi. Mm. You know, which is, is to me is pretty unique. You know, I, I've I've um, had relationships with a lot of different teachers and people involved in Tai Chi, and uh, there's what we call family styles. Mm -hmm. These are just General so that's quite like the Chen, like the Chen style, right? And the, right, the Chen, the Yang, the Wu. These are general classification, and there's hundreds of those. Mm -hmm. The most popular being Yang. That's you know like Y A N G, 
right? Then there's what we call the temple style. So my teacher was a disciple that lived in the temple and learned a temple style teaching, mm-hmm. which is just a different method. And uh, that's what I specialize in. So which temple? Was it Shaolin or Wudong? The temple is called the Temple of 18 Lohan, and it's located ah. in Taiwan. Okay. The temple grounds are still there because uh-huh. my direct teacher, his, uh, we did a cremation and took him back there. Mm-hmm. But it's not functioning. So they mm-hmm. put him in a, you know, inside of a, uh, a display there mm-hmm. with some really important people. I'm pretty amazed. That's awesome. So I got a little uh, quick history lesson. Um, yoga started in Egypt, and then from Egypt through the spice trade by by water, mm-hmm. it went from uh, Cairo to Ethiopia, Ethiopia to India. Really? And then the adepts and the sages there took those movements and turned it into what we know as yoga. But if you study Pantanjali, mm-hmm. who is the, yeah, the, the yoga sutras, the yoga sutras, yeah. he's like <laughs> the authority on yeah. it. Yes. Okay? Yes. And then India was actually known for martial arts more than China mm-hmm. back in the day. Really? Now, well, once don't. it got to India, it got to the Silk Road. Okay. And from the Silk Road, it traveled from India to China to Tibet to Afghanistan mm-hmm. to Turkey. So yoga was all along the Silk Road. But at some point, the Mongolians cut off pieces of the road. So the people who were studying mm. yoga, they got their connection cut, mm. and they couldn't get the refresh. Gotcha. So they had to figure out how to do it on their own. Solo mm. practice. Solo practice. So that's how qigong came from yoga. Gotcha. So qigong, I mean yoga in Tibet became Qigong. Yoga in China became Qigong because the Mongolians and the Muslims, whoever was controlling the Silk Road, Uh they cut off the the passage. So the knowledge couldn't get through. So let me ask you one question. You said it started in uh, Egypt. Is that the Kemetic Yoga? That is the Kemetic Yoga. Gotcha. And it was a moving yoga. Oh, okay. Kemetic Another yoga moving is, meditation. It's a moving meditation. Okay. Now, India is hot as blazes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Frequently 90 to 110 degrees mm-hmm. in India. Mm-hmm. So they're not this. They're going to like lay on the ground and be soft. Okay. Now, Hatha yoga yes. is exercise so that you can sit in meditation longer. Mm-hmm. Hatha yoga is not the yoga. Yoga is Yanya yoga, Raja yoga, and Bhakti yoga, which is love yoga, service yoga, devotional yoga, and, and Yanya yoga is wisdom yoga. So first, I, I am of service to you then I study, and then Raja is all of them together. Mm-hmm. And then Hatha is the, the, the postures, the pranayam, yes. the nasal, the, the neti pa, yeah. the internal closing, the uh, pancha, uh, pancha karma. All these things are physical aspects to develop the spiritual. Yes. Um, there are actually uh, all those yoga postures that you're supposed to do is actually to get you ready to meditate, to sit still and meditate. You're supposed to do all those postures just to sit to still and meditate to reach enlightenment. And uh, and, and you're exactly right because uh, my lineage is uh, is uh, hot is uh, the hot yoga mm-hmm. lineage uh, from. Uh, my teacher is Corbin Stacy. 
Jimmy Barkin, who used to be with Bikram, they mm. had a split, but that's why that's why the uh, Hatha Yoga is like that. Mm -hmm. It's because the, you, you emulate the temperature that was in, in, in India. India. Exactly. Yes, and he talks about that all the time, so that's why like hot yoga, the Bikram Barkin Yoga is hot yoga because they emulate the temperatures in the That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the 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 yoga from Kemet, which is the original name of Egypt, and we'll go into a whole discussion about what Egyptian means. But the original yoga was done in the temples at four o'clock and at sunrise. So they it was done at particular times when it was cooler. They didn't do it in the middle of the day. Um, so there was always some overhang that protected them from the heat of the sun. So that's why it was called uh, sunrise, sun salute. Sun salutation. Sun salutation. And then you did it again at four in the afternoon. As the sun goes down behind the mountains, it's cool. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, actually, that's a there's a uh, there's a yoga uh, community that like dress in all white, and they and they have their um, their yoga meetings at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I totally forget. the name of the yoga style yoga loses me. Krishna, I forgot, but I think that's it. Yeah, uh, Krishna yoga, I think so. I, I, city yoga. I can't, I can't. The, the I it's on took my tongue, but uh, yeah, it deals, it deals with the um, the nadis and the uh, the uh, chakras and then the uh, the spiral. It deals with all that. I'm so glad you brought that up because in our future we're going to talk about the nadis and the correspondences yeah. between the meridians and the the chakras yes, yes. okay mm -hmm. so um if you're liking this discussion please comment tell tell us what you like if you have any questions type in uh your questions and if you'd like to see more of marcus and lester then join us starting june 1st we're going to be every monday at 10 a.m right here so you don't have to go looking for us. You're going to find us where you found us now. That's where you're going to find us every Monday at 10 a.m. So the okay. podcast is 10 a.m. And the class is at 7.30 in the morning. Tai mm Chi, -hmm. Yoga, Chi, Gong. Okay. That's the podcast. All right. So I need help getting my hands and fingers stretched out from holding my phone. <laughs> oh, mm, I got you on that. So, uh, you got one. Everybody, everybody show them one. Everybody show them one. All right. So, hyperextend your wrist, grab your fingers, pull your fingers back, and switch hands. And do that about 10 times. Okay. You got something? Yeah, it was a series, but it's not just one. We, it's not just one. Well, yeah, everything's a series. I'll just show you one. So, so anyway. Show everyone the one. You want to concentrate on spreading the webs of the finger, the tissue in between, to spread it apart, spreading the palm as well. This is called Yi Jin Jing. Take them apart. And then you can just squeeze as if you're scratching through something very hard, like the bark on a tree. A cat squeezes it to scratch and sharpen his claws. And then you release that. This movement can be done. We do it 6, 12, 18 repetitions or whatever. You just find what works for you. And it's just back and forth movement. And then relax. So this is muscle tendon changing. Yi Jin Jing. This one. Absolutely. And I'm sure it's in a series of exercises, which is called Yi Jin Jing, muscle tendon changing. And you have something in yoga for the fingers. Uh, fingers and wrists. Uh, so you just open your palm up just like this, like it's a platform, and just dig and rotate into it nice and slow. Open your fist, open your fingers, make a fist, close, open, close, and then we switch directions. 
Oh, I like that. I do too. I've never seen this one. Well, we both learned something. <laughs> it was really good. Mm. Then now you switch. And then you go to the other wow, side. That was amazing. Don't forget to open and close your fingers. Everything's alive. Good show and tell. Switch the cool. right Wow. Mm. This right. is going to be a fun show starting June 1st. Mm -hmm. wow. Join us. Save the date. Save the day. This is great. I like that one a lot. <laughs> yeah. I feel the tendon ligament engagement yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh man. Thank you. So we have a we have got another question. Thanks for the question. We all need to die. Absolutely <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Somebody said they do this naturally. Well, Sweet. that's great. Do that's great. This being what this movement that we just no, did. No. Uh, this, 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 this. Right. Yeah. Okay. That that's good. Full range no, that's good. Well, you're plugged in. You must be meditating. If you, <laughs> if you downloaded that naturally, you must be meditating. Yeah. Tell him to do that. Think about that type of uh, intention everywhere. With mindfulness. Yeah, everywhere. Right. Your whole body, think about that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just start going with those type of concepts. Candice, would you hand me the uh, baton? Thank you. All right. So this is one of the uh, products that we have. It's called a Chibaton. <laughs> and we do a chi circle with the baton. Yeah, okay. And then we do shoulder openers. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. And then this is a footsie roller, so you can put your feet mm, on here. Mm -hmm. nice. But now that we're talking about hands, That's true. there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of things you can do. That opens up your wrist. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So rolling, rolling it under the foot would be like a foot massage. Exactly. Wow. And then you can put these knobs in the back. In the back. So, on. so the spines in the front mm. and the spinal erectors, which are the tendons that support the, the spine, side. you'll put on the lateral sides of the spine, and you would lay on the floor. And of course, this this part is going to roll. Oh. So you can roll it up. Or roll it down mm -hmm. while you're laying on your back. So we're gonna try that it's off the air. Oh, that's gonna be a nice release. That's gonna be or if you need a pillow right here. Right. Bam. Exactly. Yahtzee. Right exactly. there. Exactly. You breathe through it. Yeah, you just go to sleep. Exactly. That's it. Breathe through it, my brother. Mm. Awesome. Wow. That's awesome. You've seen this before, right? I think yours looks a little no. Nah, what I seen was another rattan, but it didn't have these. Didn't have the foot ridges. In right. It. Okay. It was just a straight mm -hmm. piece in the middle. But yours has this as well for the spine. This is yeah. This is different. Okay, so we've got another question. What can I do for a pinched nerve in the right side of my neck, going down into my pinky and ring finger? Okay, so that is C three, C four. So if you um. The base of the skull is called the occip occipital ridge. And if you go straight into your spine and you move your head back and forth, that's C1, the first cervical, and then C2, and then C3. So now C3, you want to turn from side to side and see if it moves, okay? So if you're getting a pinched nerve, it's C3, C4, and you can use this on your neck. If you want to order it, that's great. If not, you can put uh, three tennis balls in a sock and then lay on the tennis balls on the floor, not in the bed, on the floor, and, and just keep lifting your neck and rotating your neck. Mm. That'll eventually free that up. So you'll. that's how you can get rid of a pinched nerve, unless you want to come to my office and get acupuncture. <laughs> so that nerve is like compressed in between those vertebrae. Exactly. And that like opens up the space. Exactly. Exactly. 
Audrey said, Audrey Home says, thank you. It feels better already. Wow. Okay, so um, I like seeing all three disciplines together. Zuchi Young. Oh, Zochi! All right. Zochi is a Tai Chi teacher. And right now he's in Ethiopia. He's mm. teaching in, in Ethiopia. Zochi. Zochi from Cali? Zochi from Cali. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So oh, tell us something good about Tai Chi in Africa. What? Zuchi from Cali. I'm also, oh, Zuchi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's in the Tai Chi connection. Too. Right. He's in the Tai Chi connection. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, eventually, we're going to be making a trip to Africa to teach corporate wellness. Sweet. <laughs> so um, this is major, Marcus. Thank you so much oh, yeah, no for problem. making this suggestion. Yes, of be course, because of course. a lot of people look for conflict. A lot of people look for one-upsmanship and putting uh the other one down and so here we are Hello. arm in arm we're working together okay you need all three if you're a parent or an or an uncle or not your kids need to be in self-defense class you need to learn martial arts because number one it teaches respect for each other and respect for authority and your kids will not get shot down in the street by the police or anyone else if they're taking self-defense. Sure. And then as they get older, they need to go through the spiritual evolution of Qigong. And then they are ready for Tai Chi to perfect and, uh, and coordinate all the parts of the body. Okay. So Kenneth Wayne Boyd has a question. Mm -hmm. What can I do to help my left shoulder torn rotator cuff with tendonitis and bursitis? Bursitis. Yeah. Okay. So if you were uh, at class. if you were at class this morning, then you saw us use hmm. double cheek cups. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you go to class tomorrow morning and you have to go to uh, lovechigong.com, that's Q-I-G-O-N-G, qigong.com, you can register for the class. And we're teaching chi cups every day this week. And that's how you can help your shoulder to our rotator cuff with tendonitis and bursitis. Okay. Okay, on Facebook, Alexis Vidak, a good yoga and Tai Chi pose for posture, question mark. Well, the, all of yoga is good for posture, mm -hmm. but just pick one one pose that you would recommend. Um, right here, it's called flag pose. Mm -hmm. So basically, you sit on your butt and you engage your core right here and now you act like someone pulling a string from the top of your spine you elongate up all your chakras are aligned properly mm -hmm. well and right here with you i engage my core my quads my chest everything is aligned properly just for good posture mm -hmm. and normally we see it we like hunker down you know right in your back um especially when you lean forward a lot of people's back looks like question mark you know that's mm -hmm. not this bad right here just like in l everything circulates properly and you're engaging your core mm -hmm. okay, you, you moved out of camera range sorry <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. so uh you want to show them one uh tai chi pose that improves posture well um <laughs> Some of the things are actually very similar to what uh, Marcus was just explaining. Regardless as to what posture, there's many, there's some principles that underlie all of the postures, and that's what's more important than anything. He's talking about having the, the crown point going up, having the spine elongated. You know, these things are key to no matter what posture you do. So as I'm sitting now, I'm actually making sure that I'm sitting in the correct Tai Chi posture. Because tai chi, tai chi can be done sitting in a chair. 
right? How convenient is that? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who aren't able to walk, I start them off with uh, feet, shoulders width apart, head erect, chin is slightly in, the chest is just a little relaxed, and we move into just twisting the spine left and right. You know, mm -hmm. it's like holding a Tai Chi ball. Mm -hmm. Echo Urbanista from IG says, what about elbow and forearm release? Mm -hmm. That's also going to be the right back to it. Right Chico. back to the cheek. Right back to it. Uh, circles. I also um um seafood Robert Robert uh, Robert John. Uh, he's the one who taught me about um, circles and tai chi and just and everything. And mm -hmm. that's where you just keep thinking about just rotating everything into a circle. This right here. It's a good elbow release yes. where you go mm -hmm. under and then you switch directions and come back around. And then you hear a lot of pop, pop. So do it mm -hmm. like 25 times one way and then do it 25 times the other way. So all of Qigong is good for posture, awesome just, just you know. Uh -huh. But uh, the standing meditation that we did this morning, and we only did it for one minute, uh -huh. but we're going to gradually bring you guys up to 30 minutes of standing meditation. So that was easy for you. I was looking at you out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. Okay. yeah he was like, I'm with it. <laughs> you know, we big on standing meditation. And like, as you just said, we start with the very first step, one minute. You go as far as you can and slowly but surely it builds up over time. But consistency is king. Consistency is the key. Repetition is the mother of skill. Okay, so um, how are we doing on questions? We have one more question. Yeah, one more question. So if you really like what's going on here, uh, comment and go to lovechigong.com and we'll send you a notice, a reminder notice that this class with Yoga Tai Chi and Qigong all together is going to start Monday, June 1st, 10 a.m. Okay, so I got one uh, last thing you want to, see it? to say before we go. Uh, we are developing sanctuaries for wellness. I'm currently in Kenya. Please speak of the core principles mm -hmm. and values of practice. Wow, you want to start that one off? Well, we could be plain and simple, as I just said, regardless of whatever practice you have. And when mm -hmm. I say practice, to me, uh, life itself is practice. So everything we do is practice. Mm -hmm. So engage these, these simple body principles into everything that you do throughout your day. Mm -hmm. The breathing principle, you mm -hmm. know, breathing from the belly, standing correctly in the correct posture, not slouched over. Mm -hmm. Engage those simple principles. You know, people look for complex things when really we all should be headed towards simplicity. Right? Uh -huh. Heading right. towards simplicity. Right. Nature is simple. So I say life, make your life a spiritual practice. And I also say use sleep as a spiritual practice. Right. Because you're all too busy. Okay. Now, how do people get in touch with you? Well, actually, it's very simple. Um, just go to my Facebook page, which uh, is Lester. My first name is Lester. Last name is Holmes. That's H-O-L-M-E-S. Facebook, Lester Holmes. That's okay. it. And how do people get in touch with you? Uh, Instagram, Bram, B-R-I-M, and the numbers 205. Bram 205 on IG. Mm -hmm. And you can always find me at Dr. Chi Love, D-R-Q-I on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So, wow, I'm excited about working with you guys. Uh -huh. And I'm really, really excited about the future for you because your life is gonna change and we wanna be a part of your future because you are going to evolve kicking and screaming or you're going to die prematurely. 
So it's your choice. You, was, you either evolve or die. And I say Qigong for life. Wow. 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 So your health is in your hands. And prevention is the only cure. And in order to be well, you got to chi well. June 1st. Don't forget June 1st. Uh, tai Chi Yoga tai, uh, Chi Gong Chi uh, 10 a.m. podcast June 1st, June 1st, June 1st. Yes. What's the link? Love Chi Gong. Love Chi Gong dot com. All right. All right. That was awesome. See you for it. That was awesome. Thank you. I always learn when I'm in your presence. Where are you, where's your guy I thinking about opening team is awesome. his uh, yoga studio? Oh, oh wait. So I'm still not done with the live. Oh. All right. So we're going to be working together. So it occurred to me. You're done? 